to all those above me that watch over me, to all of you, my fave para peeps on this side of the veil, welcome. This is the Paranormal Ministry. I'm your host, Sean Whittington. I'm a seminarian in the United States Old Catholic Church, and I'm coming to you live from my haunted home, my very haunted home, where I live. Before we get going, I'm going to ask all of my paranormal ministry uh, family to keep my wife and I both in your prayers. My wife just tested positive for COVID. God, we fought it off for so long. And sure enough, she just tested positive for COVID. And I've been fighting this. I haven't tested positive for it, but I've been fighting off this bad cold for the last uh, couple of weeks now. So just keep us in your prayers. And um, having said that, I hope you all are doing wonderful. I hope everyone is healthy and happy. And thank you so much for tuning in. I don't have a show without you. And we have a great show today. You all know and love my guest. And that's why you all tuned in. Nobody tunes in for me. And that's the way it should be. He's in the green room. I'll pull him on shortly. Uh, but let's check the prayer urn. David W. from Las Vegas, Nevada. Hey, Las Vegas. My father is very ill. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that, David. Still home, not yet in hospice. I'm hoping he finds God before it's too late. He is watching today. Can you say something that might help? <laughs> David, this is a wonderful request. Uh, David and your father. Um, hey, listen, it, it, that's a... a personal choice. Everybody, trust me, we all one day will talk to God, whether you believe in him or not. But you know what? Uh, my discernment is telling me, reminding me of a beautiful prayer that I'm going to pull out. And it's going to come out of my St. Benedict prayer book. And my guest happens to be a brother, a uh, Benedictine monk. So that is so appropriate. So yes, I will say a nice prayer for you. Let me, let me throw this out to you, David. If you and your father want to reach out to me after the show, um, please do. I'm here for you. And I can talk to your dad and uh, see where he's at on this whole uh, thing we call uh, religion, I guess. You know, uh, we can all use a little more God, no matter where you are in your faith or not. So I'd be more than willing to talk to your father. But this currently is one of my most favorite prayers. And um uh, I hope you all enjoy it. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. O oh Lord, my God, teach my heart this day where and how to see you, where and how to find you. You have made me and remade me, and you have bestowed on me all the good things I possess, and still I do not know you. I have not yet done that for which I was made. Teach me to seek you, for I cannot seek you unless you teach me, or find you unless you show yourself to me. Let me seek you in my desire. Let me desire you in my seeking. Let me find you by loving you. Let me love you when I find you. Amen. Isn't that a beautiful prayer? And my bookmark happens to be a Guardian angel prayer. Angel of God, my guardian dear, to whom his love commits me here, ever this day be at my side to light and guard, to rule and guide. Amen. All you got to do, David, is ask your guardian angels, and your father's got them too, whether he believes in them or not. Ask his guardian angels to step forward and guide him to where he needs to be. But please reach out to me after the show, and, and we can have this discussion. Let's check the mailbag. Linda P., also in Las Vegas, Nevada. Hey, Las Vegas in the house. My children love all the paranormal shows. <laughs> yep. Uh, and they all want to start ghost hunting. Any advice? Five question marks. Uh, good luck. <laughs> start saving your money. All the kids want all the new expensive 
gadgets that are out on the market today. So uh, it's all about making the kids happy, right? But this is my advice. You know what? I'm going to keep this question out and run this past my guest too, because he's got a very successful team, has had a very successful team for a long time now. Um, this is my suggestion. This is not a joke. If you're really passionate about being a paranormal investigator, ghost hunter, ghost buster, um, parapsychologist, whatever, uh, this is not a joke. You got to be very careful in children especially. I don't know if I want to slap an age limit on when they should start doing this. This is what I will tell you, um, Linda. They need some training. They need to join a team that's already been doing this for a little bit who welcome um, the next generation of ghost hunters to come in and train them properly and get them started on the right, you know, the best foot, good foot forward. Um, and you too, I'm going to throw this offer out to you. Keep me posted on how that's going, but find a good local team. I'll even try and do that for you to find a good local team here um, that is willing to uh, train the next generation of ghost hunters coming up. Um, but stress to them to respect the locations, respect the spirits, be careful, don't provoke, and um, just be careful. And, and just, I, I can't say it enough, be careful. Okay, if there's anything you want to know about my wife and I and our ministry work, go to our website, www.ghost-b-gone.biz. If you go there to visit, there's a lot of cool things there to see. Keep in mind that my wife and I don't charge for our ministry work, helping people with their paranormal issues. So I know, brothers and sisters, things are tough. But if you go there and you happen to notice the donate button and you're able to do so, Click on it and send my ministry in a small donation. I promise you, it'll be appreciated from the bottom of our hearts. And trust me, we'll put it to good use. I'm also a certified spiritual advisor. So if you're having any issues of a spiritual nature not necessarily attached to the paranormal, there's a place on the website where you can make an appointment to speak with me. But don't leave the website without navigating over to the page called the WSE course slash book. On that page, you'll find the ghost store. Lots of cool things to buy if you go for that sort of stuff. And everything you buy there, proceeds go to support causes that I support. But scroll past all that stuff and you'll run into my new haunted autobiography, God, Ghosts, and the Paranormal Ministry. And I quote, scariest book I ever published. That was Annette Munich, owner of Stellium Books, my publisher, but don't let that scare you off of purchasing a copy. If you haven't done your good deed for the day yet, part of the proceeds of every sale of every copy of my book goes to support stjude.org, St. Jude's Children's Research Hospital, Nevada, and the ASPCA. It's a no-brainer. How cool is that? You get to help some of the neediest children on the planet and the animals, too. You can get the book a little less expensive at Amazon. You can also buy it on the website. It comes autographed and enclosed in a beautiful house blessing kit. So that's pretty cool, too. And it's a great time to get the book and get all caught up because God, Ghost, and the Paranormal Ministry 2, Chronicles of an American Exorcist, comes out in October of this year. So uh, this is a great time to get the first book, get all caught up before you rush right out and get the second one. Scroll a little bit further down past the book. And you'll see the Worldwide Society of Exorcists, which I'm a founding member. I offer a 12-week online college-level course, Introduction to Spiritual Warfare, through the WSE. And this is the course for all you true warriors for Christ out there that feel a calling and a longing to want to have more knowledge when it comes to drawing your line in the sand, making a stand, circling the wagons, and putting up a good fight against god forbid true evil if it ever comes calling this is the course for you no it's not going to teach you how to be an exorcist that's a completely different calling but what it will do is exactly what it says introduction to spiritual warfare through my eyes the things that i've experienced and dealt with over the past let's say 10 years especially since i became a deliverance minister um this is a good course for you. It's unlike any course you'll find out there. Um, if you want to have more knowledge about the course before making that type of commitment, 
There's a Worldwide Society of Exorcists Facebook page, or just call me, reach out to me. We can talk about if the course is right for you. Most importantly, please keep all of my former, current, and future students in your prayers. And all my students that graduate get a stunning diploma, certificate of completion, suited for framing, along with some other very special blessed gifts that you can only get from yours truly. So that's my song and dance on the course. And um, first day of spring. So the spring open enrollment for the spring classes is like days away. So this is a good time to jump on board if if you're interested in that in that type of a course. All righty. The moment of truth, the reason why you all popped in tonight. He's a brother. He's a friend. I love him and respect him. Uh, he's a cool dude. You guys are going to love him, and most of you already know who he is. Um, paranormal investigator. He is a Benedictine Order of St. Benedict novice. Paranormal investigator. A lead investigator of his own team. Author. Poet. Maybe I can talk him into reciting a poem tonight. Brothers and sisters. Let's give a big, warm, first time on the show, so let's give him a big, warm, paranormal ministry family welcome to the one and only Bill Payne. How you doing, brother? What are you doing? <laughs> I just got done with the case, been reviewing it, and going through the DVR footage of it and seeing what we got from there. You know what? I was. Uh, I have to take my hat off to you and salute you. Well, I don't have a hat on to take off, but if I did, <laughs> I'd take it off and I would salute you because I went to your Facebook page, which is Hopkins H O P K I N S Hopkins County Paranormal Society. You guys are active. You work a lot of cases and you film them. Yes, and you got all the film footage on the on the Facebook page. I love that. Um, we'll get we'll get to all of that, but. Listen, I, I there's something I got to get off my chest, and I'm gonna I'm gonna try not to get emotional here. Um, I don't know if this is appropriate or not, and forgive me if it's not, but I feel I wouldn't be a friend if I didn't at least bring it up. Um, is there anything you would like to say about Misty? Oh wow! Uh, and if and if not, brother, it's okay. No, it's fine. It's good. Because I feel she's here watching um, uh, and still so terribly in love with you and watching over you and the, and your kids. And Absolutely. So uh, I just, I felt, I would I would have felt bad if I didn't at least mention her. Uh, so please forgive me. Oh, no. I, I actually, thank you for the question. But we've known each other since we were kids. Uh, she chased after me for six years before we even got together. I, uh, every time she wanted to date me, I always had a girlfriend at the time. So, <laughs> so, so uh, my, my nickname I gave you, Wild Bill, is, is appropriate. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, finally, finally, we did get together. And uh, after six months of dating, I popped the question and we got married. And we've been married, it'd be 29 years. And this August, and her birthday is actually next week. So me and my daughters we're going to get together and celebrate her birthday. She's uh, never liked the paranormal, but she's always supported me in it and appreciated my reason for doing it because I had a calling for it. It wasn't something I just woke up one morning and decided to do. I felt called to do it. But she's always supported me on it and everything. And that's one thing I can honestly say, I mean, she's always supported me no matter what decision I decided to make, whether it be writing books or doing the paranormal or doing music or being a DJ or whatever. But her death was very unexpected. She spent the last six months in the hospital before she finally lost the, the battle. I mean, she died of a non-alcoholic cirrhosis of the liver, but they found it too late. She'd already had it for two years before we knew about it. So it eventually started shutting down her other organs. And, and that's what led to her death. Well, you know me. You know I'm not hard to find. Anytime you need to reach out uh, for an ear to chew on or a shoulder to cry on or someone to beat up on, 
Um, I'm your man. Um, I pray for her a lot. You know, every, every we see each other just about every night at night prayer. Right. Exactly. And I pray, I pray for you and her and your kids a lot. So, um, I, you know, like I said, I, I would have, I would have been upset with myself the rest of the night if I hadn't at least brought her up. All right. So, I mean, I can honestly say she was the most selfless, caring, compassionate, loving woman I've ever met in my life, or even human being I've ever met in my life. Hang in there, brother. Oh, yeah. Hang in there. There's too many. What you do, you're too good at what you do. And there's too many people out there that need legit uh, paranormal investigators that truly care about helping people that, um, you know, uh, she would want you to, you know, she, of course, she would want you to not change a thing about who you are and to keep doing what you do. And, and, and I know, you know, she's there still there. Absolutely. absolutely. How was your St. Patrick's day? Uh, Not too bad, actually. I mean, we were actually working a case on St. Patrick's day all day. (laughs) 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 I got funny enough, the first St. Patrick's day in many years, I got actually messages that felt like condolence messages. Like, you know, uh, cause I don't drink anymore. Back 20 years ago when I met my wife, I was a raging alcoholic and drug addict. And uh, I used to every St. Patrick's day throw on the kilt. Mm -hmm. I got a, a, an authentic, Scottish family tartan kilt of my uh, ancestry, and uh, and I would throw that on. Sharon had a matching long Scottish woman's evening skirt that matched the same tartan. We oh, would wow. go to the parade, and we would go to the pubs, and she would be my designated driver because by the end of the night, her and my buddies are carrying me home. But <laughs> it's been... I, I don't know. I, I, I haven't done that since I stopped drinking and doing drugs. Uh, which has been many, 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 many years, mm-hmm. I don't do it any longer. It's just like St. Patrick's Day is still important to me, and right. I celebrate it, Absolutely. but I, I do it at home now. But my friends are calling me up going, we feel bad for you because we know that your St. Patrick's Days aren't like they used to be. Are you hanging in there? I'm like, I'm, I'm hanging in there better now than I ever did when I was going out making a fool out of myself, which now brings me up another question. <laughs> <laughs> I got to ask you. got to ask you this. So I used to, I, I wouldn't dare go out with my kilt on and not be commando style. <laughs> You've got those beautiful Benedictine monk robes you wear. What do you guys wear under them? Are you guys commando under there? Oh, no. no, no, no. <laughs> I always make sure I got a pair of slacks on at least. <laughs> <laughs> beautiful, beautiful robes. You know, I know uh, Bishop Long has... Uh, asked me many times, you know, when are you going to uh, join the Benedictines? Here's here's my story. I, I'm going to tell you this. It's, I haven't told him this, but this is between us. I know he doesn't watch my show. <laughs> <laughs> um, I I am honored by the request, and I most certainly, that's what I am. I've been reading about St. Ben. I already knew a lot about him, about him, but I've been reading a lot about him. I've got some books on him. I've got a couple of different prayer books on him. My answer was already yes before he even asked me. But I, you know, and you can attest to this. Right now we're both in the seminary. We're so buried and slammed with studies and classes and quizzes and tests. And, um, I, I, if I, If I try to take on any more right now, I don't know if I can handle it. <laughs> I know I will be able to. God would, God would find a way. But I want to get through this first. I want to get through the seminary first. I want to, um, uh, at the very least, uh, be you know ordained into the diaconate, and then hopefully right. go on into the priesthood. And then, uh, yes, that's at the top of the list to to join your guys's order. Um, and uh, and I just I love the I love and they're not called robes they're ha- habits mm-hmm. I love the Benedictine habit it's got to be one of the most beautiful habit monk habits I've I've ever seen so oh, absolutely absolutely it'll happen and I understand we may all get together later this year for a retreat um, and who knows it may happen then oh, maybe we talked about Paul wouldn't he? 
I, I don't know. I, I haven't heard anything other than the last time he threw it out there to us to start looking for, in his neck of the woods, places that could put us all up for the weekend where they have a place where he could do the ceremonies and or right. do ordaining and have mass and all that. So that's the last time I've heard about it. So I don't know. So, so we'll see. Listen, this tonight's, you've got a lot of fans and followers out there. I don't know if you knew that this uh, show tonight has taken on a life of its own. As soon as I posted about a week or so ago that you were going to be on mm -hmm. people sent in questions for you. So I'm just going to go down the list of what people have sent me questions and ask you. Okay. And if I ask you anything that you don't want to talk about, just tell me, Sean. I'd rather move on off that topic, and we will. I'm an open book. <laughs> Haunted Kentucky with about five question marks. Somebody commented, wow, with all the Civil War activity, slavery, um, all the haunted cemeteries and cryptids, um, talk to us about Haunted Kentucky, where you're from, and yeah. – uh, stand up for stand up for where you're from and tell everybody else why Kentucky is considered to be one of the most haunted uh, areas of our country. Well, uh, see, Kentucky's got a lot of history to it. I mean, as far as the Civil War, I mean, it came right through here. We actually did a place in Sacramento, Kentucky, where a, a, a small piece of the Civil War took place at. And that they've got other history locations like Bobby Mackey's Music World. I'm sure a lot of people have heard of that. Oh, yeah. That's in Wilder, Kentucky. I've actually you, have you been there twice. You know what? Again, if I don't ask you about your experience there, mm -hmm. I'm going to be kicking myself later. Talk to me about that place because I know Bishop Long's been there. Mm -hmm. um, I've seen some shows that have gone there and filmed. And I talked to other people that. Um, I've talked to some people that are very psychically sensitive that won't go there. Right. They've been near it and won't go, they won't go in or, or go by it. Talk to me about your experience there at Bobby Mackey's. Uh, the first time I went there, we were uh, <clears throat> investigating and down in the well area where supposedly that's where they threw Pearl Bryan's head down in, into the actual well. We were uh, asking a few questions, and I'd asked the question if it was true that satanic worship took place there, and a voice comes across and says, no. The actual satanic praxis happened about a mile or two away from there, and that's also, Pearl Bryan wasn't decapitated there. She was decapitated at least two or three miles away from Bobby Mackey's, but they took her head there and disposed of it in, in the river Wow! through the well. And uh, something did actually try to attach itself to me after the investigation from there. I had caught my ride back to Evansville, Indiana, and me and the guy I, I rode with, we were just sitting there talking, and it was like 5, 6 o'clock in the morning, and it was pouring down rain. And a loud bang hit the back of his truck. We both turned around at the same time and looked back behind us, nothing there. And my ride pulls up and I'm getting my equipment out and my hand radio turns on by itself to the weather station, which at that time I didn't even know I had a weather station channel on it. And my flashlight kicked on and I told him, I said, you're not going home with me. You can go back to Bobby Mackey's. The second time it was a little bit more interesting. <sighs> While there, me and a friend of mine were upstairs in Carl Lawson's room. We were sitting there and doing a little investigation and clearly both of us heard footsteps just circling us like it was trying to uh, fill us out. And uh, I have to look over to my left and right there where our, the bedroom door is where he was stayed at leading down, downstairs. The shadow figures clearly walked right by us. And uh, I followed it down there and the, the, it seemed like it, the more closer I tried to get to it, the more it would kind of like disappear. But I could hear where it was going. So I followed it uh, all the way down to the basement area. I get down to the basement area and I'm right there by the well again. I didn't hear a loud bang this time, but all of a sudden my head just started swimming like I was about ready to pass out. I had to grab hold of the uh, banister. So, uh, <coughs> excuse me. We started uh, asking questions there and I asked the question. I said, Pearl, is it true that uh, Antonio did not want you to tell your story? And, and, it seemed like it's just that as soon as she was started to come across, a voice come across said, be quiet. Like it was can tell her not, not to say a word. 
So, I mean, I never felt anything really negative or demonic there, but I get just like I tell people, it depends on your intentions. If you go in there asking to get scratched, asking to call it out, then yeah, I mean, most likely you are going to get an attack. But if you go in there with respect, it's a whole different ball game. So, I mean, but I've also heard too that there's been a couple of exorcisms done there. So that could be why I, at that moment, I didn't have any like demonic attacks or experiences. So I guess it, but like I tell people, you get more beast with honey than you do go in asking the beast crash because a lot of people consider that provoking or taunting. That's not provoking, that's inviting. There's a difference. Well, you know, you got to take uh, that whole area there is so seeped in history. Oh, absolutely. A lot of violent history, too. But you take the guy that owns the place, he's just a musician, an artist. He's and not a scary. Yeah, he's not a paranormal dude, but so many attacks have occurred during regular business hours when people are there dancing, having a drink, watching the band, that he had to post. It takes a lot for an owner of a club like that to post signs Absolutely. covering his own rear end that, you know, enter at, enter my club at your own risk because it's known to be haunted, haunted and there's been attacks, mm -hmm. um, you know, most owners of establishments wouldn't put a sign up like that because think of how many people you scare off mm -hmm. and then now you're, you're taking money out money, you know, food off the table. Absolutely. You know? Um, yeah. Very, very interesting place. Um, and I wasn't, you know, I wasn't going to ask you this question before I go to some of your fans questions. I am going to ask you this one because only because you've been doing this a long time. Um. They've got all the theories about, you know, the ley lines and uh, um, railroad tracks mm -hmm. across America and um, bodies of water, whether it be running or still bodies of water like lakes and stuff. And then Bobby Mackey's got that running uh, yeah, like river. Yeah, right behind it. What's your take and feeling on the theories about? Uh, if there truly, if there truly seems to be more paranormal activity around ley lines, or where you see a lot of um, railroad tracks, crossings in certain areas, and bodies of water, what's what's your take on that? I kind of believe uh, it does add a little bit of intensity to it because I mean they all hold energy, and spirits need energy in order to do certain things. I, for instance, to speak. It takes a little bit of energy for them to speak to come through as an EVP. It takes a little bit more energy for them to come through as a disembodied voice. It takes a little, even a little bit more energy in order to man manifest himself into a silhouette or a shadow, and even more energy to fully manifest himself into a full body figure to where we can see who they actually are. But I mean, we all know that water is a source of energy and a source of power, as far just as well as ley lines. I mean, they all put off EMF. And we all know EMF is created from anything that holds power to it. So I, I believe it adds a certain amount of intensity to it, just, just as well as uh, thunderstorms. Yeah, I forgot about the thunderstorm one. I I have been out many, many years ago. As I used to give uh, tours of a haunted pet cemetery here in town. And whenever we went out and the weather was bad, like especially during the summer, when uh, ghost tours are most uh, active in this town. You get we get monsoon season here in Vegas, and we get some pretty radical thunderstorms going on. And it always seemed on those. And I used to log it. <clears throat> oh, excuse me. It always seemed the activity would increase during the heightened mm -hmm. active weather uh, patterns um, with right. all of that electricity and energy in the in the atmosphere. Very interesting. Um, you've got a very, I, I, I read your bio. You got a very interesting background. Um, and here you go. Next question. Somebody wants to know about your paranormal journey. I think in your bio, you mentioned you had a paranormal journey, but I don't think you specifically went into um, detail about that. How does um, a good old country boy uh, become this, and I'm going to ask you the difference between a religious demonologist and a demonologist, right. but right. you're also a religious demonologist, mm -hmm. very talented paranormal investigator. I, 
I too am interested in how that journey starts for you. I started about 20 years ago. Uh, I mean, I've always been interested in the paranormal, even as a teenager. I always read books, watched TV shows about it, studied it, uh, researched it. Any book I could find, any TV show I could find, movie I could find. Now, what was at that point? What about it built this passion? It was basically curiosity. Like, uh, how does, uh, cause always, I mean, we, we've always taught, uh, growing up. I mean, once someone dies, that's it. I mean, they're, they're done with, but then I started, I, I found books and everything about ghosts. I was like, okay, what is this? And I kind of started reading it and I couldn't put it down. Uh, cause I, I like I said, I was always taught once someone dies, they're gone. They're, I mean, that's it. But then I started reading this book. It's like, okay, this can't be, uh, what I've been told can't be true if, if this is what's going on here. So that kind of got me interested into the paranormal. And even in high school, I mean, I would do my book reports and stuff like that on ghosts, spirits, the occult, <laughs> and stuff like that. Right there. Yeah. So uh, the older I got, I mean, I, I just kept reading, kept reading, kept researching, kept researching. And then I lost my brother uh, about 15, 20 years ago to suicide. And uh, I was sitting at home one day, and next thing I know, I heard sound like someone took our uh, screen door and just slammed it. And one of the pictures come off the wall. I was like, okay, uh, was that him or is this something else? Because, I mean, my brother, the whole time he was growing up also, he always seen demons. I mean, actual demons. Wow. They, would, they would actually follow him from a young kid from my uncle's house and then chase him all the way home. And. He'd be laying in bed and he'd hear like tapping on the window thing to open it up. And he'd always describe it as a black figure with a hood and couldn't see his face. And it followed him from the time he was a kid to the time he was an adult. And did you believe him? Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, he was terrified. I mean, and what do you, what, what's your gut in your, in your heart of hearts? Um, what do you think was that all about? Why were they targeting your brother? I don't know. I mean, I kind of think because as a teenager, he became an alcoholic and he drank until the time it, he was an adult to when he actually took his life. So I don't know. I, I'm kind of thinking, I mean, it's like I tell people entities, demonic or or human spirit, they all feed off addictions as well. <laughs> yeah. So I believe that that uh, that all started when he was became an alcoholic and they just kind of followed him because he always he also drew a picture of an alcohol bottle and a spirit there saying i'll never let you go you know many people get even sometimes they're having these experiences before they even turn to alcohol and drugs yeah. and right. that sometimes gets them to do that because they, they don't know what else to turn to mm -hmm. um I, I'm going to ask you a weird question again. If I ever ask anything that's inappropriate, I apologize. You know I love you. Oh, that's um, right. let me let me ask you this question. You now are are such a um, a religious person, a very blessed person, a religious person. Uh, did you do you feel in your heart of hearts your brother found God before he took his life? I believe he did. I mean, you think that the, the demonic was behind that? Absolutely, I do. I mean, I absolutely 100% believe that the, 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 the demonic was, was behind it. Wow. Because, he, I mean, after my brother passed away, my oldest daughter, she was laying in bed one time and she described the exact same thing that he had seen. So, I mean, that's one of the reasons also why I got into the paranormal and, and studied demonology and studied the paranormal and everything. I mean, that kind of I felt like God was calling me saying, hey, this is two now. That's just seeing the same thing. Absolutely. So Absolutely. I believe so I, I believe God called me to it. Okay, here here we're gonna get a little deep here. This is a, a basic question. So you believe in ghosts? Yeah, yes. What do you think a ghost is? <sighs> well, people got their own uh ideas about they say there's a difference between a ghost and a spirit. To me, 
I can kind of see where they come from, but they describe a ghost as something that more residual that's brought on by, which is based on the stone tape theory that everything's holds energy. And a ghost is basically that where the residual, you can't communicate with them. They can't communicate with you. Just like they're stuck on a time loop, like a movie replaying itself over and over again. And some believe the actual spirit is the human spirit side, which is the intelligent side to where, they can't communicate with you and you can't communicate with them. But to me, I mean, I got my own beliefs that they're pretty much the same thing. So I, I believe they're just the uh, energy left over from, from, from it's, it's a spirit from a deceased human being. Yeah. I'm, I'm totally, I'm in that camp with you. A ghost is a ghost is a ghost. Mm-hmm. I've gone into places where it was, there were things happening that where everyone thought that got went in there and investigated that it was, uh, residual, and that I was able to find something intelligent about the haunt once I really got into it and pride. Um, okay, let's get let's get a little deeper here. Many people in our field, uh, like we're we're both going to be heavily in, we're both heavily involved in clergy right now, laity, the clergy, um, mm-hmm. and I think we'll, you and I will be doing that until the day we die. Absolutely. Um. Many clergy only believe in angels and demons and don't believe in ghosts. I do believe, I'm the first one to admit, I do believe there's been times where I have thought I was dealing with a disembodied human spirit, but it was really a demon fooling me. Oh. And I do believe sometimes I was dealing with the demonic because it was really a disembodied human spirit that was just really be- behaved in a malevolent manner. It was just a old pissed off ghost excuse my french and it behaved very malevolent so i i i'm only human you know uh i think i've been fooled a time or two oh yeah we all um have. i want you to tell people i already know you you i already know that you know the devil is real i already know you know demons are real mm-hmm. tell people about the devil and what he's up to nowadays because it seems like the demonic has been really active in our world nowadays and talk to people about demons and why they have to be very careful about the way they live their lives, especially if they're going to go and try and be a ghost hunter All right. uh, about all those dangers and, and why you and I believe in the devil and demons. Well, it's like the old saying goes, the devil's cleverest trick is to make someone believe he does. He doesn't exist. And just because they don't believe in Satan doesn't mean Satan don't believe in them because they believe in all of us. And I mean, and the thing is, too, there's only four types of hauntings. The human, which reside, which uh, involves the residual and intelligent poltergeist, which isn't a demon or a spirit. It's brought on by someone's own emotions. Elemental, which is nature spirits, and then the demonic. But they all four can resemble each other. They can imitate each other. The thing is, it's, it's, it's to learn what you're dealing with and learn to tell the uh, signs of which one you're dealing with. Because It's like I tell people, when it comes to demonic, a demonic isn't going to tell you it's a demon. It's going to do everything in its power to manipulate you, to make you think it's something else besides a, a demon. But <clears throat> thing is, too, if you're dealing with something demonic, that's if you don't have any experience, you need to get out 100%. Because if, with people, it's like I tell people who want to get into this field, if you want to get into this field, make sure you do your homework. It's not what you see on TV. What you see on TV is like 45 minutes of a 12-hour investigation. You don't see everything that goes be, happens behind the scenes. They're not going to show someone on, t- on a TV show getting possessed. Because if they do that, then nine times out of ten, most likely they're going to get canceled. So, I mean, you may see people on there getting scratched or something like that, but the thing is, you don't see what happens when they go home. The baggage they got to carry with them. In this field, things do follow you home. Things can't attach to you, and they can attack your family. It's a very dangerous field. Do your homework. Make sure you know what you're getting into. Learn how to protect yourself. Don't go in 
like all these other shows and start screaming at them, uh, yeah. calling them out, do this, do that. I don't believe you're real. If you are, then do this. Like I said, that's not taunting. That's inviting. Do you do, do you, um, in your, when you find yourself in the presence, uh, God forbid, of the demonic, mm-hmm. do you, a lot of people in our field, a lot of clergy, deliverance ministers and so forth, um, from different walks of faith than us, believe in religious provocation. I personally have never done that. What's your your thinking on that and in your approach to the demonic when you find yourself in in that realm? Uh, do you tend to do any type of provocation? I use what's called religious provocation on a few, on, on some occasions. So, uh, and what that consists of, it's not going there saying, "Okay, demon, I'm a god. Come if you you can't hurt me." No, you don't do that. What I consider religious provocation, I may say a few prayers just to see what kind of reaction I get. I may uh, quote a few Bible scriptures just to see what happens. I may play a few gospel songs to see what happens, or I may speak. I hate bit. that. <laughs> Or 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 I, that. or I may speak a little bit of Latin. I mean, just to see what happens. Like, for instance, I may say "Anomale Patres et Filii Spiritus Sancte," made Rachel of Satana. That means in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, that will be gone. And uh, or uh, just to see what happens, just to see if they know what I'm saying. Just to see if it, uh, I'll say something like, that. "Okay, can you tell me what language that was?" Just to see if I get an answer, or I say, "Can you tell me what I just said?" Just to see if I get an answer. And 99 times out of 100, I, I get no reaction. And if it was truly demonic, then you know that you would actually get a reaction out of that because everybody knows the devil and the demons, they don't like anything religious, that anything religious is going to piss them off. Yeah. So, I mean, that's one way that, that you can normally tell what you're actually dealing with. And I do that just to see if I'm dealing with a human spirit or a demonic spirit. So, and that way, if it is demonic, then I know, okay, Bishop needs to be involved. If, if it's the human spirit, then I'll, I'll do I'll do something like a human cleansing, uh, a basic cleansing and blessing, just to see if that helps. If it gets more violent, then I, then I know I, I need to call a bishop. <laughs> yeah, uh, I have to ask you this question. Mm-hmm. Uh, Linda P here from my hometown, Las Vegas, says my children love all the paranormal shows, and you mentioned that the shows. Mm-hmm. And they all want to be ghost hunters. Any advice? Now, after you answer this, there's no wrong answer here. After you put your two cents in on this request from Linda, any advice? Then I would like you to introduce your team to everyone uh, and tell us a little bit about how the team came together. Uh, my team is Hopkins County Paranormal Society, and I started it about 20 years ago. I started out with just myself and I was uh, down at the library once and checking out some books on the paranormal, some demonologist books like Ed and Ray Warren, uh, re- reading those. And the lady that was checking me out with the books, she started going into some experiences she's been having down there at the library, which the library is what was actually uh, my old school back when I was in uh, junior high. So I kind of knew the school itself and she was telling us some things that were going on there. And I said, well, I can come out. I can come down after hours if you want me to just see what I can experience if you want me to. And after hours, she called me down there and we. I started out with the only equipment I had at the time was two digital recorders, a digital camera and a flashlight. That was my first equipment. So we set up a couple of recorders down there and, uh, we actually got that. You could hear what sounded like children running down the hallway, but there was no kids there because, because I mean, they were already closed. And then you could hear what uh, sounded like a older gentleman getting onto a child, like uh, he was a teacher or something. I was like, okay. So I uh, edited that down. Yeah, I gave it to her for her own keepings. And I said, okay, well, maybe I, I need to start doing this full time. I mean, because, like I said, I, I felt God was pulling me in that direction. So I just put a ad out on uh, the, the paper and uh, made a post on Facebook uh, looking for investigators and started getting phone calls and everything. And that's pretty much how Hopkins County Paranormal Society was built. 
Very, very cool. So now Linda comes to you. Mm -hmm. Wild Bill, my kids all want to be ghost hunters. They love the shows. Any advice? My advice is, like I said, don't believe what you see on TV. It's nothing like you see on TV. Do your homework. Do your research. Make sure you are doing it for the right reasons and not the wrong reasons. Because there's no money in this field. We do it because we're called to do it. We're doing it because we're passionate about it. We love it. And we do it to help people, not to get famous, not to get rich, not to get notoriety or nothing like that. You do it because you want to help people. That's the main thing. And learn to tell what each type of haunting consists of. That way you know what you're dealing with. Don't taunt. Don't provoke. If there's something that's out of your hands, find someone who's got the experience to handle it. If you can't, then look for a pastor, a preacher, or a priest who may have the experience to go in and do it. Make sure that uh, that you keep everyone safe. Don't do it by yourself. Join somebody who knows what they're doing. Learn from them. And that's the best advice I can give Hey, Bill, I have a question for you. Adrian went and uh, she was in an investigation the other night that we broadcast live. And uh, I just noticed on your Facebook page, and I'm going to share it here real quick. Um, you're wearing a hoodie with a symbol on it. That symbol uh, is, did that come from the Vatican? Uh, no, I actually had that. uh made from a friend of mine uh she does t-shirts and hoodies and i also hold on one second oh there the saint benedict crossed on that sweatshirt that's yeah beautiful. and that's that's kind of why i'm i'm asking yeah. this because and also um, got, yeah, we saint, were told what that meant yes i got that saint benedict hat too that i wear along with it do you know what the words around that mean yes what is it <sighs> All right, he's got he, that right here. If I can find it, in the, book. the same as what he told us. The CSPB that's cross of uh, cross of our father, Saint Benedict. That's mm -hmm. what the CSPB stands for. Okay, the CSSML crux sacred sit me he lux. That means may the holy cross be our light. Okay. The NDSMD non Draco sit me he ducks. That means let not the dragon be our guide. Okay, that that was completely different. Then this one had it on the cornerstone of the church, and it said, um, it, "What it was supposed to mean on the outside of it was it was in Latin, and it said any spirits that uh, like pretty much from an exorcism, any spirits that are exorcised will live in this ground forever, never to come out." No, that's not what the, uh, the letters stand for. The, the uh, letters going around the VRS and all that are going around. What that's saying is, be gone, Satan. Do not offer me your vanities. What you offer is poison. Drink thy own poison yourself. Okay. Okay. Well, thank you very much for that. Yeah, we uh, we uh, uh, had a three-hour live. Well, actually, it was about an hour and a half of live investigation. Other than that, a lot of people got to watch me talk. Lucky them. Right. Um, but uh, and that uh, that seal showed up. Uh, on on the floor in the chapel, wow! And it wow. was in other places. So yeah, uh, when I when I took and I was sharing your Facebook page, mm -hmm. I saw that and I got all excited. I was like a little kid in school. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. I just wanted to find out about that. But uh, yeah, thank I you very much have, for uh, yeah, for have one of those right here. That, yeah, uh, Bishop Long gave me. All my team members, I always make sure my team members have the St. Benedict pendant necklace to wear for safety. And I also give them to all my clients after investigations to keep for safety as well. Well, I, I greatly appreciate that information. Uh, thank you. You're very welcome. That was a great question. Yes, it was. Very well. he, always, he always comes up with the better questions than I ask. <laughs> um, it, I, love, I love that medal. Uh, I have... Um, I would have to say my house is covered just about every room, wall to wall, ceiling to floor with crucifixes with corpuses on them. And I would probably have to say half of them 
are St. Benedict crucifixes, which is behind the corpus of Jesus on right. there is the, is the medallion. Some have the one side with the cross. Some have the outline of Benedict with the, the wording, you know, Satan, drink your own poison. Yeah. Um, I love that medal. I got that one up there, too. Yeah, there you go. Mm -hmm. um, listen, I'm going to ask you something here. Uh, we've got about five minutes before I got to say goodbye to you. If there's okay. not enough time or you don't want to, that's okay. But I happen to know how hard it is to be a talented poet. <laughs> um, is there a favorite poem of yours that speaks from the heart that you would like to share with us? Or do you want to do that another time? Uh, yeah, I can do that with you. Uh, actually, it was the very first poem I'd ever written in my life. I ever, ever wrote in my life. It's, it was uh, called "Will I Be Remembered When I Die," and I wrote that because they, we were having a. It was back when I was in high school. They were having a poetry contest, and I was sitting in math class one time, and that poem. I mean, the, the first few stanzas just popped in my head like that right there, and. I, and I knew I had to write it down because if I didn't write it down, then I would forget it. So it, it just came to me. I started writing it and writing it and writing it. And I entered it into the poetry contest and never placed. My younger brother, they were having a, a poetry contest at their school in elementary. I didn't know this. He took my poem, rewrote it, <laughs> took it to school, entered it into the poetry contest, and won first place. Every wow. teacher, every student in his, in, in his class wanted a copy of it. So, I mean, I had to say that's probably one of my favorite poems because, I mean, just, just for that um, memory alone. So, and uh, actually, it's actually in, in my book here. <clears throat> Excuse me. Find it real quick. Page 31. Will I be remembered when I die? Will I fly high in the sky? Will I be with the loving Christ? Or will I have the burning life? Will I be remembered when I die? Will the people who love me even cry? I guess I never understood the pain that life brought. But I guess it showed me one lesson that had to be taught. Some think that suicide is the way out. But that's not what life is all about. You have to treasure each moment like there's no tomorrow. If not, you'll constantly live in the sorrow. I know it brings tears to our eyes when we tell our loved ones and friends goodbye. When it's time for us to go away, there's no reason for us to be afraid because it's just Jesus calling our name. But there's one question we have to ask ourselves when that day finally arrives. Will I be remembered when I die? Beautiful. That's beautiful. Appreciate yeah, you've got you've got I, several books out, a couple, if not most of them are of poetry mm -hmm. that you've written. Uh, uh, that's such a such a I'm not going to say lost art form, but I don't know very many people that write poetry. I can count them on on one hand, I think. And you're one of those fingers. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that's beautiful, man. Don't stop doing that. You've got a, a real talent for that. Appreciate it. What else do I want to say to you before I have to say goodbye? I got about 30 seconds before I got to say goodbye to you. I, one of my all time, it, it's near the top of the list of places where I am going to go one of these days. I don't travel well, but I'm going to go one of these days. And that's anywhere near the legend of the Bell Witch. I know you probably live about an hour from there. <laughs> I've actually, um, <clears throat> Joe Bell's cabin, uh, is, uh, down, it's the only cabin left uh, standing. And, it, and, and they moved that to, to, to the museum. And I've actually investigated it three or four times. Wow. John Bell took uh, lumber from his cabin to build Joe's cabin. And it's, each time I've been down there to investigate that cabin, I've never left it. I've never left it disappointed. I bet. <laughs> I bet. I, I, I am so, that's just one of the stories that I've always, from the very first time when I was young and read about it, has always stuck with me and it, mm -hmm. it's on the top of my list uh, of places to go. Well, listen, I told you in the green room before we started that I only had one rule and that was for you to have fun. So you're going to want to come back. 
Did you have fun? And will you come back? Oh, absolutely, brother. Anytime. <laughs> you know, I love you. You know, I respect you. Hopefully you'll get to see each other face to face later this year. If we finally, if we have this retreat and everybody shows up for their different ordinations into wherever they're going on their path. Mm -hmm. um, give all the rest of your family a big hug for me. Tell everybody I said hi. Absolutely. Um, you have a wonderful remainder to your Monday evening. And I'll see you in, in an hour at night prayer. All right, man. All right, brother. I'll talk to you soon. All right. Love you. Love you too. Good night. Good night. Brother Bill Payne, OSB novice, religious demonologist, seminarian in the United States Old Catholic Church. Um, Hopkins County Paranormal Society. Follow them. What else do I want to say to you guys other than thank you all so very much for taking an hour out of your busy Monday evenings to hang out with me and Bill. I promise you he'll be back. We're just now starting the first day of spring. We're entering a lot of people are fair weathered paranormal investigators. So I'm sure him and his team will be doing, especially back in his neck of the woods, will be doing some uh, investigating. They just worked a case this past week. I should have asked him about that. Anyway. Um, yeah, I'll have him back this summer after he's got some cases under his belt. He'll probably have some really cool stories to tell. And I'll get try to get him to recite some more poetry. I love that, that stuff. So I will be here this coming Friday. It's the last of my three Fridays in a row that are all Irish because of in honor of St. Patrick's Day, which was last Friday. We're back to Ireland next, this coming Friday, the 24th. Jenny Sullivan Sanyasi will be my guest. And she is a, you know, you guys all know her and love her. She's a, a paranormal enthusiast, a paranormal authority, a, an elite ghost hunter, ghostbuster, you name it. She will be here live from Ireland this Friday, the 24th. Um, what else do I want to tell you guys? I want to thank some people here. CommunityPayItForward.us. CommunityPayItForward.us. Go there. If you shop there, you end up helping somebody. So go there, do some shopping, help somebody out. USOCC.org. USOCC.org, the church I belong to. If, you, if you're interested in wanting to know about the church I belong to, that's the website. Um, United States Old Catholic Church. If you're interested in night prayer, which is every weeknight, Monday through Friday at 7 p.m. Pacific, or if you're interested in Bible study, which is every Wednesday and Sunday afternoon at 5 p.m. Pacific, go to bishopjameslong.com. Scroll down to the bottom of his homepage. You'll see the links to both of those there. And uh, you're, you're welcome, regardless of what walk of life religious belief system you have in place or not. We don't judge. We welcome everybody. Bible study is so cool. And uh, so is night prayer. Um, so there you go. Thank you to Zach and Adrian Clayton, my co-producers. I couldn't do the show without them because I'm completely computer illiterate. So thank you, Zach. Thank you, Adrian. I'm glad you, bo you both look and sounded like you were feeling better. So. Um, that warms my heart. Please keep. <laughs> we we are, and from somebody who just got over that dreaded disease, please give your wife the best. Yeah, uh, it's scary for her because she's. I'm 63. She's 16 years older than me, and yes. has and has asthma. So and, I'm yeah. going to be doing a lot of well, praying and. Uh, hey, you know what? Talk her into staying home for a few days. Yeah, you keep us updated and our thoughts and uh, are, are with you and your wife, okay? Thank you, brother. I appreciate it. Thank you to Temple of Phoenix Rising Entertainment. Thank you to Skeleton Key Network. Thank you to PACT, little P, capital A-C-T, podcasting for all coming together channel. And thank you to Things Network. All of those networks for simulcasting my show. God bless you all for doing that. Also, BeInspiredRadio.net, BeInspiredRadio.net, Chicky Hot, the rock psychic, that's her network. 
She re-airs episodes of my show all day long on Saturdays. She also has a lot of cool shows there. She has a lot of, she replays a lot of old Art Bell shows, which is really cool. So go there, check out BeInspiredRadio.net. Bad joke time. I'm going to pull a bad joke that one of you sent in out of this haunted carnival barker hat. And it's my poor attempt to try and put a smile on everybody's face before I say good night. <laughs> what did the horse say after it tripped? Help! I've fallen and I can't giddy up. Good night, Danny. Good night, Jack. Good night, dog. Good night, Harold. Rest in peace. Good night, Ernie. Good night, Bill. Good night, Dan. I love you all. God bless you all. Peace.